Now at 6 a.m. on WKYT This Morning, state police identify the man shot by troopers overnight in eastern Kentucky. We're tracking a crime alert in Lexington. Police say some thieves went through more than a dozen cars overnight. And breathing new life into the Kentucky childhood home of boxing legend Muhammad Ali. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Top of the morning to you from the WKYT News team here on Cinco de Mayo. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Hope your day is off to a great start. And hope you maybe get some guacamole or some Mexican food in there. Or just any way you celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Could do it outside on the patio with these warm temperatures yeah. we're enjoying. We're hearing it's going to be a nice day for that, right, Micah? It'll be really nice, especially as you get toward that evening hour when temperatures right around dinner time will be around 75 degrees. I mean, it'll be perfect. First alert defender live radar. There is your clean sweep. Temperature wise, we are in the 50s and 60s. Now we're at 55 now in Danville. We're at 60 degrees in Fayette County, and then you can see 63. That's our hot spot, if you will, there in Moorhead and also Richmond in Madison County. Today's forecast 82. It gets even warmer as we slide throughout the next few days, maybe even some 90s. In the forecast, yeah, it's possible. I'll show you this summertime feel. It's in full swing the next few days, coming up in just about 10 minutes. Okay, we'll see you then. We thank you. Here's the latest from WKYT. We have some new details this morning about a state police involved shooting in eastern Kentucky. It happened last night in Wolf County, west of Campton. State police have now identified the person who was shot as well as what led up to the shooting. WKYT's Victor Puente is at our live desk with new information. Good morning, Victor. Good morning, Rebecca. Within the last hour and a half, we've learned the name of the man shot by police as well as the charges he's now facing. Kentucky State Police say this started around 9.30 Monday night. They were called to Kentucky 715 in the Pine Ridge area for an armed man. They say when they got there, 39-year-old Matthew Preston confronted them holding a handgun. That's when shots were fired and Preston was hit. They spoke with the gentleman for a brief period of time trying to get him to, to drop his weapon. Uh, at that time, the perpetrator fired a shot towards, towards the troopers. They say Preston's injuries are non-life-threatening. He was transported to Kentucky River Medical Center in Jackson before being airlifted here to UK Hospital. Once he's out of the hospital, he'll be taken to jail. He's facing two charges of attempted murder of a police officer. Now, police tell us no troopers were injured during the shooting. At the live desk, Victor Puente, WKYT. Thanks so much, Victor. New this morning, Lexington police have made an arrest in a recent shooting. 19-year-old Dequay Walker was already in jail when police charged him with assault yesterday. Police say he shot a man in the stomach last week during an attempted robbery on Caudell Drive. That was just one of several crimes there in that location in recent weeks. Walker will be arraigned later today. Well, we are tracking a crime alert this morning in Lexington. Police are looking for a couple of people who were seen breaking into several cars overnight. Yeah, there's reports still coming in right now. All of those cars are along Redding Road. Let's go to WKYT's Mark Barber there live this morning to explain what police have found so far. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Bill. Police say so far the burglars have broken into at least 15 cars here in this area between Tate's Creek Road and Lansdowne Drive. Investigators say that the first call came in around 2.30 this morning. That's when police say someone who lives in the Breckenridge Apartments on Redding Road saw two young men ducking around cars in the parking lot. According to officers, some of the cars that were hit by the burglars may have already been unlocked. Police tell us they're still checking to see if anything was stolen. Investigators tell us they don't have a detailed description of the men behind this rash of burglaries yet. Police say the car crooks were last seen on foot here in the Breckenridge Apartments. Officers are still looking for them. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you very much. Richmond police arrested a man who they say threatened to kill President Obama. Police say they were called to a park on Sunday night for the report of a man exposing himself. They say that 35-year-old Billy McGee appeared to be intoxicated when he threatened to kill a park security officer, a police officer, and the president. McGee is charged with terroristic threatening, indecent exposure, and public intoxication. A southern Kentucky community is working to help a family who lost six loved ones in a crash. Police say 41-year-old Tana Proctor, 25-year-old Audrey Ellis, 12-year-old Nate Proctor, 4-year-old Red Barnhouse, 2-year-old Zoe Bertram, and 17-month-old Jace Bertram all died Friday night in the crash near Monticello. All six were related. Hicks Vaughn Funeral Home is handling funeral arrangements and collecting donations for funeral costs. 
really the community has handled this like, hey, this is our, our duty. And, uh, you know, for that, we're proud. If you would like to donate, you can find out how to do that on our website, WKYT.com. There will also be a vigil for the victims on Saturday night in Monticello. Well, there were some frightening moments for a group of students headed home when their school bus crashed. This happened yesterday in Clark County on Colby Road. Police say a Chevy Blazer swerved to avoid rear-ending another car, and the bus had to swerve to avoid hitting the Blazer. The bus ended up hitting a stone wall. Fifteen students were on the bus, but they and the bus driver were not hurt. The driver of the Blazer was taken to a hospital with minor injuries. The time now 6.05 on WKYT this morning, and a woman is accused of trying to steal money from an eastern Kentucky fire department during a fundraiser. Harlan police charged Marilyn Goldsberry with robbery, disorderly conduct, wanton endangerment, and menacing. They say that firefighters from the lower Clover Fork Fire Department were collecting money during a roadblock when Goldsberry suddenly tried to steal a boot that had donations inside of it. I figured she was going to hit me or maybe pull the gun out or something. I didn't know what to do. I just held on to the boot. I wouldn't let it go. Firefighters and police say they were able to stop Goldsberry before she got away, and they say they were still able to raise enough money to buy gifts for children at Christmas. Well, a real estate investor who wants to restore Muhammad Ali's childhood home here in Kentucky has a new partner. A Philadelphia lawyer says he is now the co-owner of a one-story wood frame home in Louisville where the famous boxer grew up. The lawyer has partnered with a Las Vegas investor to restore the home. The lawyer says the project could cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris and First Alert Defender. Good news is it feels amazing outside this morning. If you don't believe me, just step outdoors. 50s and 60s at this very moment. That means 80s by the afternoon as we warm very rapidly. 60 degrees right now in Lexington. And Richmond, uh, Madison County, we're sitting at 63. Go just south of that into Renfro Valley, right across 75, and also 25 sitting there in Rockcastle County. It's feeling quite nice. Now, we need that rain to knock some of this pollen on out because the pollen's still in the air. We haven't really had rain for quite some time, and it just doesn't look like it's going to happen. Definitely not today, as it's high. Yeah, that's for the pollen forecast, so heads up for that. And you can still hear it in my voice that still dealing with that. Uh, the problem is it's really not going to slack off that much. I mean, we'll still be in the medium to high range the next few days. So just continue to take that medicine before you take off this morning. There you are looking toward the afternoon, 82 degrees. It'll be warm, but at least it's going to be dry. 82 is about 12 degrees above average. So we're nowhere near average this time of year. See, so go to Mayo later on this afternoon, afternoon, evening, you go out to eat. Check that out. 76 degrees at dinner time. It'll feel phenomenal. That's patio weather right there. Some of these uh, Mexican restaurants, all these restaurants you know, celebrating that Cinco de Mayo, looking for a big day, a big evening, will be packed there on the patio. You might want to get there early. Today's talkers, it is all about the heat. The heat is on. I mean, really, we'll be in the mid 80s the next couple of days. Does that mean we could push 90 degrees? Yeah, it's possible, especially as we slide toward Wednesday and Thursday time frame. And then the plans for outdoors is there. You better do that. And I want to show you what I did. I still couldn't come to work yesterday because my voice. So what I do, I take the little man out, run a few errands, give him a box of Cheerios because we were actually going to give those Cheerios to the ducks out by the pond. But that didn't work out. He decided to pour them all in his lap. He wasn't happy. Mr. Mom here was not happy. Not with him, but I, I, it was just, you know, he poured Cheerios all in there. I almost thought about just putting milk and a spoon in his hand and just let him go at it. I might clean it up a little bit faster, but Jim even put on there. He put, yeah, that's how I felt the other morning when you called me uh, at 5 a.m. That's exactly how he looked. There you are on the seven-day forecast, 86 for tomorrow. And that goes for Thursday, too. That summer fill in the forecast the next few days. Because, Bill, we're not getting out of the 80s anytime soon. I mean, it really isn't going to stop bringing that heat, maybe even 90 degrees. Yeah. We'll see how it turns That's out. a wonderful feel, you yeah. know? Oh, absolutely. All right. Well, you know, maybe Max is just trying to put those ducks on a diet. You know? <laughs> maybe so. <laughs> he wanted it all to himself. <laughs> There's a future sure. in the diet business. All right, our time this morning is 6.09. Every morning right here, we bring you weather and traffic together. Here's Officer Don with a look at what's happening out there on the roads. Good morning, Don. Good morning. Getting a live look outside. You can see 75 and 64. No complaints on the interstate. Also, across the Clay's Ferry Bridge this morning,
coming in from Madison County, traffic's uh, moving well. Uh, now, as far as our Waze map goes, not seeing any trouble yet, just uh, live drivers on the way in, reporting normal traffic flow around the city. Uh, we're also okay in about Nicholasville Road, by the way, and on Harrodsburg Road. Watching the construction zone there on the circle around Leestown, uh, that's really about slowdowns we're seeing uh, constru- uh, some couple of stalled cars there. We'll keep an eye on that. Now back to you in the studio. All right, Don, thank you very much. Always appreciate it. Our time is 610, and we have much more coming up on WKYT this morning. I hope your Tuesday's off to a fabulous start. Well, a tourist was the victim of a deadly shooting at the Kentucky Derby. Why police are calling this a random crime. And McDonald's has a new idea for turning around its sales. That story ahead on WKYT.